Just like Excel, Google Sheets provides you with the tools and insights to do the basic analytical work and tracking, but more on that later, you need in accounts, accounting, accounts payable, finance, and a variety of other functions. Best of all, it's free. All you need is a Google account. Clearly, you can use it for professional reasons, but you can also use it for your own personal requirements, like setting up a budget, keeping track of money in your checking account, and perhaps listing of assets or collections. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's start by accessing my account, but you'd have to access yours in the same way. Go to google.com, and since I'm already logged into my Google account, I don't have to log in again. Okay, but if you're not logged in, you will have to log in, and if you don't have one, you'll have to set one up. Okay. So you see those three, three little those dots, that box of dots? Click on it, and you'll see all the different applications that Google has. Okay, yours will probably be in a different order. I've kind of rearranged some of mine, so I, I had to move Google Sheets up. But what you're going to do is you're going to click on Sheets. Okay, so let's click on it. You'll be able to, by the way, when you have that, when you see that, that uh, list of uh, different uh, applications, you'll be able to drag and drop the ones that you use most to the top, whatever is most convenient for you. We click on the icon for Google Sheets. Now, another way to log in is to go to sheets.google.com. But again, you'll be asked to log into your, your Google account when you get there. So one way or another, you need a Google account and you'll need to be logged in on it. Now we come to, you'll see some templates up here, and then you'll also see some of the uh, potential files that you might want to log into. Okay, and let's just take a, a brief look at the templates. Um, I'm going to hit the, the, the arrow, the down arrow, so we can see a whole bunch of them. Uh, you can pull one of these up and then rename it for yourself, or you don't have to. You can see budget, um, a, a whole, whole bunch of them. Uh, what I find particularly interesting is under this area called work, um, you see invoice, expense report, purchase order. So clearly uh, Google uh, likes accounts payable folks because they have uh, a lot for us. But okay, enough about the templates. You can go and take a look at them in your spare time if uh, that is of interest to you. Now, perhaps you don't want to see them all. And in that case, what you can do is click on the three dots um, and get them to go and you're going, they'll disappear. You want to go back to the template gallery. You see the three dots. If you click on them, they'll disappear. But we're going to create a new spreadsheet. So let's uh, start by clicking on the dot, clicking on the plus, and you can see here is our new spreadsheet. Now, if you're a regular Excel user, you'll notice that it looks somewhat like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but you can look to the cows come home, but one thing that you're not going to find is a save button. And I have to tell you, in the beginning, I found this a little disconcerting, but you'll get used to it. Your work is automatically saved the moment you enter the data. Um, and that's an important distinction because in Excel, you know, it's only saved when you save it, unless you've set up something. And if you work on a spreadsheet and then you decide you don't like the changes you made, well, they're still there. Now, I want to take a look at what I call the ribbon. Okay, um, on top, it looks a little bit like the Excel ribbon, but it is not exactly the same. And it's quite probably not as what I would call robust. It doesn't have as many um, issues, but let's take a quick look through it. So you can see here, uh, file, and you can click on file. And it, when you click on it, it will open up and you'll get to see, you can have a new open, make a copy, etc. You can look at, um, important to note, you can download. So you can either save your information in the cloud or you can, you can download it. Okay. Um, edit, it has the do, undo, copy, paste. You'll notice that a lot of these functions are very much like Excel. Um, the view, if you want to make it larger, smaller, etc. Um, insert and it's it's you know in Excel there are two inserts here we, we just have one and you can see all the different things you can insert you can format just like you can in Excel but again uh, different um, your data uh, here this is for sorting and filtering very important in accounts payable in certain things um, look at the tools it has spell check etc um, and then it has some extensions if you want to add on macros etc um, underneath that, let me make that go away. 
Underneath that, you have, just like you have in Excel, you can, you know, add or subtract whatever you think is important to you. Um, a lot of these are formatting tools, but you'll put here whatever you want, okay? Um, now, let's take a look at the spreadsheet itself. Um, just like in Excel, you have columns A, B, C, D, and then you have your rows uh, going down. We have sheets at the bottom. Um, and just like Excel, you, you can add a sheet. I'm going to add a sheet and add another sheet and you can um, do different things with them. Let's click on this one, uh, for example, and you can do the, the usual things. Uh, the big one here is you might want to rename it because if you're going to have several sheets in the same document, you certainly don't want them called sheet one, sheet two, sheet two, three. Okay, the next thing that I want to uh, draw your attention to is uh, sizing of the columns. This is especially important, um, at least to me, uh, because sometimes the numbers go longer or the words. Um, and this, in this case, it's different than Excel. You just basically click like I did here and I can make the column wider. You can see I made column A wider or I can make it shorter, whatever is necessary. So you just kind of drag and drop to resize your uh, columns. Click and drag. Now, each of the little spaces um, is, called, is, is a cell, um, just like um, it is in Excel. And we uh, here, um, so like if we wanted to do 12 plus 15, if you just put 12 plus 15 in, you notice that it just puts it in as, it doesn't recognize it as a number. So we want to put plus 12 plus 15 if we wanted to add it. In other words, you have to have a symbol to start. But now, as you know, in Excel, you can also do that with the uh, plus sign and um, it works here as well. So what you'll find as we go through this is most of what you know in Excel, if you do know Excel, will will work uh, in Google Sheets. But, you know, we, there are some differences, like we talked about the saving and as I showed you, resizing the different columns. Okay, so let's create a simple spreadsheet so that you can see how it works. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is that this, at this point, this is called Untitled Spreadsheet. If we don't give this a name, then um, it's going to be saved as untitled spreadsheet and you can end up with a whole bunch of untitled spreadsheets and that's not going to do you any good so let's call this we're going to change it and we're going to uh, we, we're going to make a check register so let's call this check check register uh, 2024 okay so that's what we're going to call it and let's um, get let's start putting some uh, information and so let's start with our column headings uh, we're going to have our expenses on one side and our cash cash in on the other side and then we'll have a balance so let's start off with date and you know I'm just typing these expense so we can define what it is the amount if it was an amount and then we're going to have receipts so we know what it is and you can make this whatever you want it to be. Let's how about you spell it right. T, amount. Um, and then let's, uh, we, we want to begin with a, um, so let's say January 1. And we want to have a starting balance. So that's going to be a receipt. Oops, let's go. And we're going to call that $100. Okay. Let's say also on January 1, well, we get paid. Let's say we get paid once a month. And we're going to, so we're going to call this pay. And let's say we make $7,000 a month. Let's say that's the net. Of course, most people's salary is, is not an even number. Now you see as I'm going in to put these things in, we want the header to stand up. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to uh, highlight those three things. I'm just basically dragging my mouse along and I'm going to make it bold. You see how I did that? And um, I can even... Let's increase the font size a little bit by clicking on that so that it kind of stands out. Okay, and so we put our salary in and now we're going to pack one and let's put an expense in on January 1. And let's say Aunt Sylvie sent us a Christmas check. sent us a check for um, $150. Okay, and let's say we took some cash out on January 1. And let's say cash, we took some cash out of the bank, $200. Okay, and so how much money do we have? Yeah. 
going to put our starting balance. Probably would have been better to put it here, but whatever, I didn't. So we want to take the balance from the prior day plus any money that we put in minus any money that went out. And so we have $7,050. And then what we want to do is just copy this formula down. Um, say on January 5th, we're going to pay some bills. And so let's say we have a mortgage payment of um, uh, $3,200. Um, we have, let's say, uh, electric bill, $300. Uh, insurance policy of uh, $87. And our cell phone bill. We probably have more, but you, know, you get where I'm going with this. And we're going to have, have a cell, cell, cell phone bill of $123. So to see how much money, we're just going to copy the formula like we did before. So we're going to copy, which is Control-C, Control-C, Control-V, and I'm doing Control-V to paste. Okay, so I am basically using all the functionality that I used in um, Excel. So that's where, that's where I got this functionality. Um, I want to encourage you to set up your own little spreadsheet like this and so you can play around. Now, one of the interesting things um, about this is, for example, um, let's say we, we wanted to highlight our monthly expenses. Let's just say these were our monthly expenses. You can highlight them like this, and then um, you'll see down here, see in the green down here, um, Excel has taken the liberty of doing some uh, transactions. So it's added them up. So now if those were our monthly expenses, for example, we'd know that our monthly expenses were $37.10. Um, they averaged this, not that we care, the minimum, the maximum, and there were four items. Um, so you get a whole bunch of other data, uh, insights that uh, you might not normally get. Let's say if I wanted to, let's see, let's look at um, our cash in. And again, it summed it up for us. Um, so I highlighted those items. So it's, it's a little nice feature. And now I'm done and I don't have to literally do anything because it is automatically saved. If I want to save it on my computer, then I have to go ahead and, 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 and save it myself. So I invite you to set up your own Google Sheets and play around with it and see what you can do. Um, as I mentioned, I use the Control C and the Control V, which many of you know are shortcuts from Excel um, to copy and paste information. Um, they all, I want to say all the Google short, all the Excel shortcuts will work on Google Sheets, but let's just say most because somebody will find some esoteric one that doesn't work. Okay, these shortcuts make you much more efficient. Since our mission at AP Now is to help our accounts payable accounting and finance audience be more efficient, we recently made a video on Excel shortcuts that everyone should know. I like to call it Excel from A to Z. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.